What is going on guys? And today we're gonna to be working with a trunk lead, which is the motor actuator. It doesn't work. At the stage two of the motor is not working. One thing coming before another one, but that's what happened. I was ready to start fixing the roof. And apparently this is two washers, what I've been planning to install, the shim washers, uh, which is particular for a uh, roof uh, hinges and that's supposed to prevent in the roof from rattle and so on and so on. After all, I cannot open the roof because of the trunk. And as you can see, we can open it, we can lock it, but it's not automatically just locking it down. So that fix will do for any of the BMW that have uh, two stages, um, electric motor, which is the actuator, whatever stuff going on in there. But it uh, doesn't matter what car you're driving, E70, E90, E92, 93. Not that many cars have that kind of stuff, but uh, if you do, there could be three possible reasons or three possible issues with it. The first one is the wiring, the harness. You're missing either the ground, either the positive terminal, which is also easy to test it, but about that uh, in a little bit. The second one is the micro switches, uh, which is they sit in on each of the motors. The assembly have two motors, which is on each of the side uh, on the latches. And basically latches are manual, but the motor kind of pulling the latches up uh, just a little bit to push the lid down. So the micro switches is the 80% uh, chance that you have a problem with them. And the third and the most expensive is gonna be obviously the motors. Enough talking, let's jump under the trunk and see what is going on with it. And the ratchet in my case they're going to be using the power tool t30 also we need the pray bars you can use the screwdriver and a couple of the pin tools uh, let's start removing the liner so i'm going to show you every single pin uh, the different pin how to remove and what to do uh, to basically remove the liner and a piece of plastic right here and it's really easy to do and the first one bunch of gray pins so you have your pray bar and you basically slide it uh, into the uh, like the top portion of the pin and pull it. And the pin itself look like that, it separates in two. Basically, that's why you want it to slide uh, the plastic tool in between. And we're pretty much done with the regular gray pin. The next spot is gonna be the plastic pieces. They're located on both sides, the passenger and the driver. And at the top, we have one pin, the gray one, which is have the same principle. And it's went all the way under the car. The second one gonna be like the black pin and it's gonna have flat head opening cut out in the middle. So either you can pull uh, straight down uh, the, the pin or you can use the pin tool and try to unscrew it some sort of we simply need pull it uh, toward the other side toward the side of the car basically there are pin at the top corner right here so after just shifting it down as you can see it right here repeat the process on the other side before we go any farther we need to release the clip from the trunk shocks which is fairly simple. You have your flat head screwdriver and there are a little cutout for it. So basically you pop your screwdriver and basically lever it uh, that spring to the top. If, you, if you're going to remove it, it's not big of a deal. It slides from the top to the bottom uh, as well. I probably can show you after all, but as you can see, we can remove uh, the shock. Repeat the process with the other side. Do not remove it because the trunk lid wouldn't hold up. The next step is super simple. You have two torque screws. I think they T27, uh, are gonna be using T25 or even might be this, the Allen key, but you get the point. Right after that, uh, we need to remove the emergency release, which is gonna be a little wire connected to the uh, green button. And if you can see, you can press the button here in the middle which is some sort of knob, twist the wire and basically try to pull it out. And right now all it's left is just to pop the shocks, the trunk shocks, pop them back on. 
and remove the liner. Oh, I totally forgot about the light. Okay, there comes the funny part. Okay, the next step is gonna be quite simple. Uh, as you suspecting, you have to undo all of the connectors. And the first one, which is gonna be, you just twist them 45 degrees and pull it out. So basically, this is how the back of the connector looks. Push it to the side, disconnect the connector from the, the motor. Then uh, we're going to disconnect the connector from the micro switch, which is that one. It doesn't really have a top, but you gotta be pretty careful. I would use the uh, pliers or so and just help yourself a little bit with that. Also on the driver's side, we have a trunk lead, a button actuator motor, which is that connector. And you have to press two tops from the sides and pull the connector. You can see you just press the sides. Repeat the process with the other side. So now we are ready to remove the whole assembly. Each of the side have three bolts, which is first one is right uh, near the motor, the second one and the third. I'll keep one bolt just loose in there. Do not just uh, put the weight on one side. Also, I forgot to mention there are gonna be emergency release. Uh, I remove it from the trunk lead. Now we are looking on the assembly itself, uh, the passenger side, the driver's side motor, and the servo actuator, which is connected directly to the trunk release button. And whenever you press the button, uh, that bastard basically pull all the wires and opens up the latch. And for example, if I gonna close the driver's side, uh, the latch, and I gonna pull the little white knob here, or same way I can actuate the motor, just pu push it, uh, we're gonna open the latch. So if we wanted to remove the motor, uh, we're gonna need to remove that uh, lever button here, which is, I'm gonna show you in a second how to, and remove the actuator, uh, the motor. For the micro switch replacement, we simply can pop that white knob here, twist it. Actually, before twisting it, you wanted to press uh, the pin at the center here and then twist it and pop it out the wire. If you wanna replace only the micro switch, that's gonna be uh, the trick. You removing that piece of plastic right here and you gotta be pretty cautious about it. Try to pull the piece up and kind of squish it and pull it out. And this is our micro switch, as you can see. Okay, after we remove the micro switch, you wanna flip the assembly. And right now, you won't release uh, that wire here, which is have little clamp. And you kind of pull the top and push it up. So now we release uh, the wire. I'm not gonna be removing the wire, because I know what is going on with the motor. And we're just undoing this top, uh, you just pull the motor. The other side, gonna have two small tops. So you just be aware, uh, one side gonna have only one top and the other side gonna have two of those guys. And with that, we kind of expose the motor. Also, I hope you can see it, but we have a known element, which is was on the way of the micro switch and it wasn't letting uh, the uh, hinge uh, go all the way up. So it wasn't pressing on that button on the micro switch. I have no idea where that piece came from, but it looks like it were sitting somewhere. But whatever. Before do any of those uh, procedures, you wanted to test the micro switch. How can you test the micro switch? The first and the most important, you connected the OBD scanner, which is able to trigger the components and you uh, trigger the trunk motors. If they actuating and they kind of pulling it, means the micro switch is not working. Those guys is relatively cheap. I will get you the links in the description for all of, for, for all of those tools or pins or tops or knobs. And uh, that's the thing. If the motor did not actuate, it means either you have uh, the power problem, which is power not coming uh, to the motor, or the motor itself it tossed it. So there are not many things that could be wrong. Like I said, the micro switch, the motor, or the power, uh, and basically that's it. Or in our case, something is stuck in between of the micro switch and that little uh, lever right here. Also, if you did remove the wire, which is 
let me just show you which is going to be that white uh, top you have to press three points and how I am doing it so I'm pressing the two tops with a plastic tool and then use the screwdriver and press in the third top and basically it's gonna pop out. I'm not gonna do it right now. Also, you're gonna to need to undo these two uh, T20s, which is holding the servo or actuator motor. And basically uh, the deal is gonna be done. You simply pull in the wire uh, through the opening right here. So for the reassembling, you wanna fish the connector uh, from the motor inside of that opening and then kind of slowly but gently fix everything back. From that step, you wanted to make sure there is nothing on the way and the motor all the way down and a check for the tops, which you can see them from the other side right here. This is the cutout, this is the opening for them. And the only thing you need, it's a slide motor down then reconnect all of the wires and push down uh, the little knob here back, which is locked. Everything is, seems to be as it was. They're really, uh, they're really nothing complicated here, straightforward. From that point, uh, you can install everything back, also the micro switch. So for the micro switch installation, uh, you wanna remove the motor, close uh, the latch, and basically you have those two pins on a micro switch and you want it to slide that piece onto it. And while it's still on the spot, you want to kind of uh, fish that protective boot on the top and kind of hold it with the other hand, the bottom portion there. You're ready for assembly. Okay, we got our assembly, try to Get all of the wires out of the way. And the first thing you wanna do just get on a position of one bolt. You wanna get two bolts. And just top in the first side and then do the same with the other side. Make sure everything is intact. You did not jam any of the wires or whatever. The motors can be slide a little. You adjust the screw holes. If you're using the power tool, use the lowest setting. Uh, I think the torque for those guys is supposed to be 18 or 15 uh, Newton meters of torque. From that point, shout out from the trunk, reassembling everything back. Uh, I'll try to do more time-lapse footage, but uh, pretty much that's it. Reconnect all of the wiring, the harness, and you're pretty much done. I will connect the micro switch first, then the trunk motor, and then the top. Same on the other side. Also, the actuator, micro switch, motor. Reinstall the emergency release, pop in the liner back. The last step is testing and leasing uh, for the actuator sound or pressing the bottom first because we might lock any of the latches. Voila. So this is gonna be the sound on the trunk lead button. And this is gonna be the sound of the actual motors. 
whenever you close in the tops, we hear in the uh, motor noise. And pretty much that's it. Basically, there are not that many problems which is, can be wrong with those motors. Either the motor is done, either the micro switch. Sometimes it could be the button whenever you press it and no action is done. Those buttons are pretty cheap. Uh, also, it's pretty easy to replace it. I should have shown you how to do it, but the next time. Anyway, guys, if you like the video, please hit a thumbs up button there, subscribe my channel and leave me a comment below. I'll see you next one.